All right, everyone, so here's the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to set this up so that, notice, I loaded up my page here, and I'm on the home screen, and it says, Welcome, Bill. I go over to Art, become an artist, Bill. I go over to Computers, learn about computers, Bill. I wanted to show the person's name that they customized um, in more than one screen. So it'll require a little bit of, uh, of setup, uh, changing our code a little bit so that it um, it loads up the name when um, it loads up the name into multiple locations when we load the the file. So let me uh, let me get back here. Go ahead and go back to your index file. Okay, so if we scroll down to where it previously said that welcome message placeholder, line 52, um, notice the way we did it was, we've got the H2, and it says welcome. We give it an ID so that when we capture the name, We've got the um, get element by ID, inner HTML. I'm going to open the Kodika file. Also, open your Kodika JavaScript file. And uh, so it's replacing uh, the inner HTML of of anything called welcome message with what we wrote here, welcome and then the username. And that worked so far for us because there's one thing in the whole document called welcome message. And that's because we're using an ID. And the nature of an ID is it can only be used once per document. So we can only use ID once in this whole index file. And I want this, that name to be used in multiple places. So the other construct that we can use instead of ID is class. We saw that previously with div class wide image. We applied wide image to a variety of images throughout our document, and they all behaved the same way. So instead of it being an ID, it will be a class. But actually, if we do it this way, we get into a little bit of a limitation because our code in the JS file says, wherever you see welcome message, make it say welcome, comma, the person's name. And that works great on the home page. But on the art page, it says, take an art class, Victor. So we're being a little bit too, um, we're not quite targeting it. We, we'll do it like this instead. Um, we'll say that after the term, after welcome, let's write a comma. So it's going to say welcome, comma, the person's name. And then we'll add this, uh, this other type of generic placeholder. Divs are generic placeholders that, hold, that can hold anything. Um, but another kind that we can use is called a span. So let's write the span tag right here. Open and close span. We've we're using a span because a span is an inline element as opposed to a div, which is a block element. Which means that this, whatever we put in here, will live in the same line as welcome. If we use the div, it might take its take up its own space, its own block. So a span can also have an ID or a class. The class that I'm going to give it is the one that H2 had. So I'm going to move class out of H2 and put it into span. So notice
I moved class into span. And also make sure you change it to a class, not an ID. And once you do that, you will be this. So move it over. Uh, now what we've got is this placeholder. And now we can take this whole unit, we can take this whole unit and put it anywhere in our document where we want the name to appear. Question. Yeah, a little bit more generic would, would work. Um, yeah, we'll do that and then we'll change it in the JS. So it's no longer, we called it previously welcome message because we had been applying it to something called welcome. But then we're going to use it also where it says become an artist, learn computers, etc. So we can maybe make it a little more generic. This will still work, but um, you should make your code um, have the concept that you want. Yes? Right now, if there is nothing in that, you're still going to have welcome, comma, and that might not be as desirable as you would wish. Yes, but remember that we're dealing with that eventuality with this over here. If there is no name, it'll then print what we tell it here, welcome friend. So, okay. so technically, whatever we wrote right here will be moot because of that if, else, when we try to get the username. But you're no longer able to point at that anymore because you don't have an ID for the entire content. Hmm. Well, well, we're, we're going to change that. Um, mm, yes, that's true. The else... I mean, you could change it to just friend, obviously. Okay, yeah, that... that um, yep, these are, the, these are the little things that happen when we beta test. Uh, so... I'm going to say... Uh, well, let me let me get back to it in a moment. A comma in the span. It'll rewrite it. Yes, l let's get back with that comma just a moment. Let's get the whole thing working, and then we'll get the details. Uh, I'm going to remove the comma for the moment. Let's see. Welcome. Okay, so we've got this span, and that means that um, that'll be replaced with our name. Uh, so wherever we want to use it, we can. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy that here. Uh, copy it from here, and then we'll go over to where... To where it also where I also want my name over on line 101. On line 101, I also wanted to see the person's name, so I'll paste that span. And um, we'll also paste it in the computer screen, which is line 173. So everywhere where we've got that span, that we've given that class name. Uh, it'll change it'll change uh, accordingly. So uh, we're going to change that and save it. <coughs> Go over to the uh, JS file.
And so within our function of load name, this is where this is where our uh, our code was changing the ID. And notice it says get element by ID. It's no longer an ID. It's a class. So we need to write slightly different code. So I'm going to comment comment that out. I may use it at some point again. And instead, we're going to use a slightly differently written code, which is this. Notice we've got the dollar notation again, and that again is because it's jQuery. So here we're saying basically the element, any element in the document that is this class. Classes are also referenced with the dot. So dot welcome message in quotes. We're saying the HTML inside of it will be changed to whatever is inside of the username of our local storage object. And this is under the load name. We should do the same thing on the first customize because this will uh, this will this will run when we load the site. But we still have this one up here, which was pointing to the ID, which no longer exists. So basically, just copy that same line, copy and paste up to our customize function. Question. On the on the dollar sign command, is this is this command just naturally come and to make this onto the end? Or do we have to say put the put this on the end of what's there already? Well, this part is to identify a particular element in our document, either a div, uh, I mean either an ID or a class and such. But what we're actually doing about the concatenation, so to speak, is the HTML part here, although it's not really concatenating it. It's just replacing what's inside of that span with this bit of HTML. We do have a, uh, a dot append. Do we lose the word welcome, and it just replaces it with our username? No, because remember, what we've done under index over here is it's going to leave whatever message is already there, and oh, then I add see. to it whatever's in span. So do we want to put a comma in front of this? Yes, and I've got too many spaces, but yes, we'll, we'll do that one moment. We'll see what we need to do in order for that to work. However, we can't just put a comma. Uh, so let's um, save. Let's save. Um, save and run your index. So I'm running it in uh, Chrome. Welcome, John. Art. Oh, become an artist, John. Computers. Learn about computers, John. And then I customize it again, and it says Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. So make sure you change both of those lines, 11 and 21. This one is to load the new name, but remember we need to put the new name back here. So I commented out the original get element by ID on both, and now we're doing it via this way, via jQuery. Does that work for everyone? Any, yes? Is that, is that HTML jQuery's way of the inner HTML command? pretty much. Yeah, we're changing the HTML that's inside of this element, in, in our case the span, with the, the value of local storage. And then we'll talk about adding the comma in a moment. Um, 
and the space. Like the right of the 
numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so they're not. These people are. Older. And I'll do it. They're just a little bit older. And they used to be public school. And so they were never given, you know, computers that actually work well. So they never really you know, so you know, up until about a few weeks ago, everyone was on Explorer 9. And so, you know, it, and and people just died uh, when they were this point. You know, they were like, hey, so she said, oh, yeah, it was Alice Cooper from Drop. And that is the video was not done. And then she said, I am doing this on a Mac. <laughs> this is a good a few suggestions. The second flight is blank. The second flight is not blank. The second flight is blank. <laughs> All right, everyone, just a couple of more things and then we'll be finished. Now, um, the, um, this welcome message that appears here is, uh, is literally writing exactly what we tell it. So did you notice that when you, when you run, when you run your, your code, it puts the name exactly how, how you told it. Now, some of you did this, some of you didn't, and I did it just a force of habit, but let me do it the way perhaps some of you, most of you did it. Whereas you didn't write a space uh, right here. So notice how I wrote it. I, I wrote a space. Learn about computers, space, and then span. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this without a space, computers, and then the span right next to it. I think most of you did that. I'm going to put it like this. So I'm going to remove it. I put it in all of them, but like this. Uh, so I've got welcome and then the, the span. The result of that is then it, it literally uh, writes what is there, which is no space, which is that the um, the, the, the value in the user name appears right next to whatever was already there. So we're going to append that also we have um, a little comma and then a space and the person's name. So that's going to be editing our code like this. Where we've done on previous spots where we've written something plus so on our previous example, we had welcome, comma, space, plus the, the object. So we're going to write what, what we're missing, the comma and the space. All right, so I'll start here on line 21. In quotes, all right, comma, space, and then after the quotes, plus. So this should put inside the span the comma and the space, and then next to it the, the person's username. So I need that exact little bit of code for the first time that we set this up when we customize. Line 11. Here's before, here's after. It wrote it wrote the uh, the comma and the space because we wrote a comma and a space and then plus concatenation. Next to it put the value of username 
that is a local storage object. I need to remember to use it more often. Yeah. Question. If it seems really repetitive, like how can we use that to write it twice? We have to write it twice because the first time is when the person first puts their name. Remember, customize. That function runs when a person goes to the customize button and clicks it. The prompt appears, we write their name. So that name has to be put on in the app the first time, which is customize. And then, when a person comes back to it after closing it and coming back to it, I expect the name to already be there. So we do load name. It checks, does the name exist? If it does, then show it. If it doesn't, we'll deal with that one in a moment. That's why we have it twice. We'll have it kind of three times. Because we have to deal with the first time someone writes their name and then subsequent times when they return, if there is a name or not a name. Yes? You could just call load name. That's true. So this is this is the cool thing about this. You figure out what are what are techniques, what are tricks, what are shortcuts. Technically, what we could also do is you know remove that and have load name. That's what you meant. Could do that too. We're running load name here because it's going to do all of this. I guess. I'll put it back there. So that's why again why we might create a function and reuse it as, as necessary. <coughs> I guess the very last thing is, well, now this doesn't work anymore. Back when it was checking if else, we still have that welcome friend, which doesn't load up anymore because there's no more ID. Remember, we changed it to a class. I'm just going to comment that out and borrow what I wrote previously and change it. Actually, that'll do it for all of them, won't it? Yeah. <coughs> so, um, I'm just going to comment it out, but um, here we've got then the customization. And notice that um, we, uh, we needed to do this um, sort of error checking to see what would make sense depending on the person's interaction. This is why beta testing uh, is important to kind of figure out what are all of the issues that could happen. I need to think like a user. What could they do? How could they mess up my app? I me think like them and then try to get that get that issue resolved. You know, beta testing with a bunch of people. We're we're, we're figuring out these things together. So um, pretty much, I've got what I wanted at this point. Um, we did a lot today with uh, 
some more JavaScript with HTML5, with uh, local storage, a little bit of if-else. Any questions? Yes? Any string which uh, can be even um, even picture data, because a picture can be represented as a base sixty four encoded string. You know, a picture is could be one long string of data that could be stored inside of your local storage as well. So, like if they had a um, avatar or something yeah. associated with that mm -hmm. username. Yes. Yeah, uh, we can create multiple of these local storage objects, local storage dot avatar equals, and then use methods to capture a picture and then save it as a long string of text. And there's the picture. And then display it on screen, you know, uh, decoding it as that long string into an actual picture. So that's that's a possibility as well. Just one one at a time. I was quicker on the draw here. Yes. Oh, you said that earlier that you were going to show us where the browser actually stores the local No, I, I did. It was uh, when we're looking at Chrome, for example, and we're doing the inspect element, and under resources, it's this is where it's storing it. It's embedded into the file, uh, in, into the web browser. Oh, okay. It's not an actual file in some directory inside. I have to double check that. I don't believe so. I think it's embedded in the browser itself. That's why we're seeing that when we switch from browser to browser, it's not the same name because every browser is storing On the their data. There where underneath local storage where it says file slash slash. Yeah. Is there something? If we had multiple, if we had multiple files open, uh, it would probably list all of the different files. But uh, this that it's showing us here, like if we had cookies, it would tell us where the cookies are at. But it's it's because of the current file in the web browser. Right, any other questions? Oh yes. In your hypothetical example of storing image data as base sixty four in, in a string like this. I was trying to imagine how you would first decode it back into binary and then be able to render it on the page. When we get to the um, using uh, Cordova uh, to work on our on our Android app, there will be examples right there. And basically, um, if you want to start to look at that, you can go to cordova.apache.org and look up the camera. Um, the camera API at cordova.apache.org and there's a couple of examples there it's pretty straightforward uh, the web browsers can render the base64 encoded data pretty much as is but we'll see I just was thinking a typical image source is going to do it not quite we will um, within when we've got the image source we do have to also say image slash jpeg I believe and in a certain kind of way, and then it will display the picture okay. from the base 64. Yes, uh, and that's the thing about the depending on the web browsers, they should all give you a minimum of five megabytes, but some give you a maximum of 100 megabytes, and some give you unlimited. So the web browsers themselves also vary on how they implement local storage. So what we're saying about saving a picture is doable, but it's not the best thing. There will be other things, that, other ways to save our, our, large, our large data like that. Yes? So local storage, that doesn't have anything to do with cache, right? Not really, uh, because it's more permanent than cache. Uh, we have so session you, storage. Cache in your cookie, that would not clear the local storage. Like if you go to, you know, the, the internet tools or whatever and clear your your history or whatever, you know. It should not. I, I believe I've checked this clear browsing data. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do an epic clear. Still there. So it stores it in a different place that it doesn't seem that that normally clears it out. What's that? Okay. So again, the web browsers. Everyone, uh, everyone loves a standard, but not everyone follows a standard. So. so the browser, it's so then someone makes a standard and hopes everyone follows it. It's a browser wars all over again. Uh, okay, so at this point uh, we'll wrap up and have a little lab time, and I'll put my file in the network folder in just a moment, but uh, we're moving a pretty good pace now, and when we come back next week, uh, check the itinerary and what things we're going to do. We're going to switch gears a little bit and start talking about uh, more of the, the uh, other assets uh, of our app, graphical assets and, and that sort of thing. So um, also be on the lookout for the YouTube videos that should be coming up over the weekend.